our first speaker. Please welcome up John McCarroll, who's going to talk about OpenStreetMap. Hello, thank you. Thank you, Alistair. Uh, so I'm going to speak to you about OpenStreetMap, uh, your project you may or may not have come across uh, about freeing uh, map data, freeing geodata. Uh, so why? Why would we do this? Well, geodata historically hasn't been uh, current. Like, How often have you been to a mapping website? Uh, happened a lot more in the days of multi-map, but even more recently, you go to a, a mapping website, the road's wrong, there's, it says there's a pub there, it's not there. There's all these different things that... You know, you know that it's wrong. You can you have stood outside a pub and it's not there on the map, or vice vice versa. It's not open. So if you know this, surely you can just go in there. You can change it, make it right, and then the next person doesn't have this problem. Well, no, you generally can't do that. It's also not free, and this is especially been the case in the UK, where we have Ordnance Survey, who are this amazing company who do great mapping, which is expensive, closed, and well, theirs is usually quite current, but the people who then use it don't necessarily update theirs. So wiki is obviously the next step. Something like Wikipedia, anyone can go in, anyone can edit it. It's free, it's open, it's current. And it's just fun. It gets you out in the streets, gets you speaking to people you don't normally speak to. All of that is fun. So we make, we as part of the OpenStreetMap community, make beautiful maps, which we give away for free. So here is a map of Liverpool that I did earlier today. It's really nice. You can see there's plenty of data there. I mean, you think it's like Wikipedia, so maybe there's going to be stuff missing. Not that Wikipedia is bad, but you know, you think it's this uh, community project. It's not going to be particularly good. There might not be all that data. That looks like a pretty complete map of Liverpool. Uh, this is what Liverpool looked like when I first got involved with the project about six years ago. Nothing there at all. In fact, this, uh, this picture was taken a little while after I got involved. So when I actually started, there was, I think, something in the centre which isn't showing up, but there was basically nothing. This is actually from a, a frame in the background. This is going to animate. This is what happened after I had been mapping for a couple of months. There we go. So I got Sefton Park in, Calder Stones, lots of other roads started to appear. Lots more data, lot, lot, looks a lot better, a lot more rich. Oh, finished the M57, took me a while to do that. Uh, this next slide goes a little bit fast, if it's going to go at all. There we go. So lots more data. Uh, it's not just Liverpool, obviously. This is The Hague. Uh, this is Washington, D.C., this is Berlin, so it's a worldwide project. Anyone can get involved, so anyone who wants to can go along and, and edit this data and put, fill in their country, their city. But then, oh, some quotes. It really isn't working, is it? Uh, so there's a lot of people that have said some great things about open mapping. It's possible for a bunch of smart people with technology we have to go out and do this sort of thing. That was Ed Parsons, who used to work for Ordnance Survey and now does mapping at Google. So he's probably going to know something about this. Uh, similarly, if we don't make low-resolution mapping data publicly available, people are going to go out and get it themselves. That was Tim Berners-Lee, who quite famously invented the web. Uh, and then a similar quote from another guy who's sort of well-known in technology. You might ask, well, isn't Google free? You know, Google Maps, you go there, you can get the API, you can go to the website, it's all free. The, why do we need this open street map? Well, if we go back to the, the principles I mentioned earlier, is it current? Well, when was the last time you went to the Moat House Hotel in Liverpool? I assure you I took this screenshot you know, two hours ago. Moat House Hotel, and I'm pretty sure the consulate of the United States in Liverpool hasn't actually been there for a while. Uh, can't see anything else from the right now but you know it's not even google maps isn't up to date is it open well they have they have ways that you can sort of get involved and you can say oh this is wrong i, I have to admit i didn't report the problems with that previous map because i was too busy doing my slides uh, they also have map maker which is their way of letting anybody get involved make the map for countries like india and africa where there isn't much map, mapping data already they've got this project you can, people can get involved they can put all this data into Google, and then they can't get it out again. 
you're allowed to get map tiles, and they do some sort of data where you can get the shapes of the roads and things like that, but it's not rich data with all, all, the, uh, all the detail that you might want if you're doing a research project or if you're doing a really in-depth ma mapping website. Google just don't give you that. And is it actually free? Well, you can, a lot of people can use the Google Maps API, but a lot of people can't. They are starting to charge for it. They've claimed 0.35% of their current uh, customers are going to have to start paying, but I've seen quite a few people that have said, we're going to have to start paying. We're going to OpenStreetMap. But I have to admit, Google do actually support OpenStreetMap. They, have, they regularly sponsor a conference that we hold every year. They have paid for service, so they are interested in the project. And they do, I mean, clearly they think this sort of thing is a good idea because they have their own competing project, but they are trying to help, so I will give them that. And other providers as well. MapQuest in America sponsors and gets involved. And Microsoft actually let you trace over their aerial imagery. So if you don't want to, you can actually map from your home. If you know where the road is, but you don't know the exact shape, you can trace over this aerial imagery and type in the name as I'll get to later. So one of the ways that people do this is they have a mapping party. The uh, first one was in the Isle of Wight. And at the time, this was the only free mapping data of the Isle of Wight. It was an ordnance survey map from 1950s, uh, probably, which ordnance survey being crown copyright goes out of copyright after 50 years and becomes public domain, so that's quite a handy thing. So a load of people went out with GPSs, took lots of traces of all the roads. They put it into editors and they came out with this, which is you know pretty nice looking map of, of the Isle of Wight, which we'll also come back to later. This is a mapping party we had in Liverpool, people arriving, people all in a second will start going out to map the areas they've been allocated. Each of those yellow dots is probably an individual or a couple of people going out. While they're out there, they have a GPS on, they trace where they've been, they write down the name of roads or take photos, all that sort of thing. Uh, when they're finished, they come back, they upload the data into the database, they uh, edit it, and at the end of it, you get a lovely map like the one that you've seen, which you'll see in a second. Here we go. So at the end of that mapping party, this is the map that we had. So you can see there is still, there's gaps in it. It's not finished, but that was uh, November 2007, so that was quite a while ago. So I say that you can get involved with it, you can do this, you can do that. How would you do that? Well, you can collect GPS traces, so if you have a GPS, which if you have a smartphone, you do, uh, but you don't necessarily have to do that. You need to understand the data model, so this is where it gets a little bit technical. They have nodes, which are generally points of interest, so places, like a pub or a post box or something like that. It has a place on the earth. It doesn't, it's not got a three or two dimensional shape, it's just a place. We have ways, which are lines of, of nodes, so uh, a road might be a way, or they can be a polygon, so a building outline or a local area or a state or something like that can be a, a way ordered list of nodes, and then a relation is a way of linking a few ways together. So if you say you can't turn from this road onto that road when you're going you know, in a certain time or something, you could do that with a relation by linking them all together. It's, it's a complicated thing that I've not actually used that much. On top of that data, you then put tags. So this is just simple keyword, you know, key value pair stuff. So a motorway is highway equals motorway. That when you allocate its name, you say name equals M6. It's pretty simple. Amenity equals post box. Amenity equals place of worship. Religion equals Buddhist. You can do all these things. Anything that you could put on a map, you can do with these tags. Uh, this is unfortunately a Manchester example, but this is what the map looks like. Uh, this is uh, tracing on aerial imagery. So this is actually not we have better, map, better aerial data these days, but you can see like the, uh, it's the GMAX center, isn't it? And uh, you can see where Deansgate runs down there. On the, uh, with, if you turned off all this data, because obviously there is quite a bit of data, you can see gaps in the buildings. So you can tell where the roads are. You can draw them on top. Uh, and you can see these tags below, name equals Deansgate, highway equals primary. 
This is an alternative editor that you can use. This is a desktop program that you can get. It shows all the GPS traces. You can draw on top of those if you prefer. And if you do want to get involved with that, head over to the website, openstreetmap.org, or the wiki. Uh, and this page, I'll put the slides up uh, later on, and I'm sure the social media Twitter account will link to it. And then you can, uh, the, this wiki page gives you loads of information about what to tag things as. So the license, I say it's free, it's CC by SA at the moment, which means it's Creative Commons. You can do anything you want with it pretty much so long as you uh, attribute it. So you say this comes from OpenStreetMap and you share alike. So if you make a, a great map from it, you have to make your map free as well. But that's fair enough because you got the data for free. Uh, it's changing to the open database license, which is basically this, a different way of saying the same thing. So OpenStreetMap's in use a lot. This is a great example. This is Nestoria, uh, a, a property website. A few years ago, they actually used Google Maps up there, but then Google didn't have very good either white imagery. So for the either white, they pulled in the OpenStreetMap stuff because that was the best mapping data. And this was uh, four or five years ago. But these days, they are part of this 0.35% that Google are going to start charging. They can't afford to pay what Google wanted them to pay, so they've just gone to OpenStreetMap and used that, and it's free and a lot easier. Uh, this is Cycle Streets. So this is a great website. If you've got a bike, you like to uh, cycle to work or things like that, but you don't necessarily want to be going down the main roads, but you don't know the best way to go. This will give you a full description of the best way to go, and it can give you options between fastest, balanced, shortest route. So, you know, maybe you want the fastest, so you're happy to go on the main roads. Maybe you, you actually just want a nice, quiet road, so it'll take you that way. And it's, it's really interesting, because I use this to get into town. Uh, actually, I commute in the car, and I see lots of cyclists going down Prince's Road and Prince's Avenue, like having cars having to try and get out of the way, and it's a real problem. When I go down that way, I go about 100 metres on Princess Avenue, pull off, and then go 100 metres parallel to it, and it's a lot quieter, and, there's, uh, and it's, just, you know, it's just as fast. This is a website of mine called MapMeAt, which is all about tracking your location, if you're going, uh, tracks where you go to, if you're going to pubs and cafes, that sort of thing. Also, if you're going walking or cycling, you can track your trace on there. We also track the ferry, so this is the Royal Iris Ferry this afternoon. We track where she goes and uh, use that for all sorts of interesting things. And I'm using, uh, using OpenStreetMap for that. This is a trace of everywhere I went in January 2009, every day sort of put on top of each other. Uh, and this is all based on OpenStreetMap data as well. Let's see that again. I don't know if I can do that. But just Neil's trying to watch. <laughs> Actually, unfortunately, I went to Manchester a lot then. But... <laughs> Not that I have anything against Manchester. Uh, geocaching.com. A lot you probably know about geocaching. This is sort of going on a treasure hunt to find a buried lunchbox that someone's put a plastic toy in, and writing down that you've been there. They've recently switched to OpenStreetMap as well for the same reasons as Nestoria. They're quite a big website, but they, that doesn't mean they have lots of money. And Google want them to pay for mapping data, so they've had to switch away. Uh, this is just an interesting picture. It's every single trace every single GPS trace in Google, in, uh, sorry, in OpenStreetMap, uh, a couple of years ago actually, but you can see where the uh, centers of population are, you can see where the roads are, and this is literally just GPS traces. This isn't, hasn't been edited by anyone. So there's quite a few mobile apps that you can get. Uh, start with Android. Uh, I haven't, I'll admit I haven't tried these Android apps, but they seem to be uh, fairly good. There's a huge wiki page on the OpenStreetMap wiki about them. Uh, this one claimed to offer offline maps. So one thing you're not allowed to do with Google Maps, for instance, and many of the other mapping providers, is to store the map tiles. So if you did a mobile app for when people go on holiday and they don't have mobile data, if it was stored in the Google Maps, you'd get in trouble. With OpenStreetMap, that's actually preferred because then you're not hitting the OpenStreetMap servers all the time. So this one apparently does that, as does... Uh, MapDroid. Uh, so like I say, you can before you go on holiday, you can download the area that you're going to be staying in, and then when you get there, you don't have to use mobile data. It's actually, it can be a lot faster as well. I can do it for Liverpool, and it just means I don't have to wait for the data to load. Uh, Scobbler is actually a sat-nav type app, so 
you know, I say, say I want to go from here to here, gives you, I think, spoken instructions, and, you know, it looks like a TomTom -tom or any other sat-nav, and it's all based on OpenStreetMap data. And then MapZen is a program that lets you put data in. So if you're in a cafe or in a restaurant or something like that, and it's not in OpenStreetMap, you can use MapZen to add it, and then, you know, eventually when you try your sat-nav to get there the next time, because you're using Scobbler, you'll find the cafes in there, because you put it in. Similarly for iPhone, Scobbler is available for that as well. Uh, Navfree is another one, sat-nav app, uh, works just like a TomTom. Offmaps does the offline mapping thing. There's two versions of Offmaps, Offmaps and Offmaps 2. I would recommend the first version. Uh, and Maps then again is available for iPhone. And OpenStreetMap isn't just about, you know, people like us who've, you know, we've got smartphones, we've got a uh, happy westernized life. People in developing countries can get a huge amount from OpenStreetMap because they don't, they, a lot of the time their countries don't have any mapping data, let alone Ordnance Survey perfect, wonderful mapping data that we have. Uh, so there's the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team who go out to the, who literally they, I think they're supported by the UN and they go to these areas and they help them to pre pre prepare mapping data and get involved with communities. A lot of this came from a project in Gaza, so to provide people in Gaza with actual useful mapping data. Uh, Kibera is a slum in Africa that you know, wasn't on a map. The only official map of that area showed this as being a lovely forest or something like that, when actually it was a slum and there's just people living in poverty. Uh, these, a friend of mine actually went out there uh, as part of a project and got people involved, handed them GPSs, got them doing the mapping data. Not only do they get a map at the end of it, they also have learned how to use computers, how to use GPSs. People then make small businesses doing paper maps and distribu distributing them or like providing maps to local businesses. So there's a lot that people can get out of this. Uh, this is Haiti. If you remember the earthquake that happened a few years ago, it, essentially a third world country didn't have a lot of infrastructure when a was it a, like seven, magnitude seven or something like that, earthquake hit, the country was screwed. Fortunately, these guys who've involved with OpenStreetMap realized this would be a problem. You see, the earthquake will hit in a moment. Moments later, people realized this and went on there. They just used the aerial imagery to start off with, just started tracing over roads. Nobody knew what they were called, but so long as we trace over them, people would know there's a, there was a road there. More people later on could get involved and start putting in, well, these are the water points, these are the uh, camps, these are where the Red Cross stations are. All of this data went in there and was a huge help for the people of Haiti when they, and for the uh, rescue workers trying to, trying to uh, help people. I think all these blue dots are the uh, water stations or something like that. So these just people going in and putting all this data really helps people. So if you want to use OpenStreetMap, if you have a website and you want to put some maps on there, Switch to OSM is a great place to look. It gets you, it gets you started, shows you the JavaScript API that you can use, shows you where you can get map tiles. You can, uh, there's various places you can get map tiles from, or if you prefer, you can make your own. You can make them whatever color you want. You can make them match your branding. Uh, you can do all sorts of it because you have the data. You have access to the raw data. Uh, I did wonder about doing a demo, but I don't think there's going to be time or inclination or uh, I don't think it'd be feasible, but thank you. <laughs>